Hello, everybody! Welcome to the live stream. I hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful week. I'm so excited today to talk to you guys about another segment of art for our creators specifically, right? How do you publish your own blog on the web, on the web, right? The World Wide Web. And it's very fascinating because, you know, throughout our you know, experience of building websites, we've gone from, you know, going from a maybe you're familiar with something like um, WordPress, right? Uh, you just go ahead and has its own managed content management system. And then you go and you add some content and you build it up. But we've all known that that process is a little tedious and also not that beautiful. There's also, of course, a lot of different apps out there like Medium and whatever that allow you to post and they help you with formatting. It looks very beautiful. It's all very standardized. But what if you want your own personal website, right? And we explored many, many different uh, topics on this channel already regarding this. We've explored different ways of, you know, using Notion perhaps as a way to uh, host your sites. We just you know, put your information on Notion and then just publish it to the web, but then you have you miss the opportunity to put it, your own custom domain on it. And then we talked about how do we use our own custom domain uh, and still host a Notion website, right? Through tools like Fruition or like Super uh, and many other, um, you know, instances like that. And then we finally stumbled upon how do we create like a really lightning fast blog using latest technologies at the time um, a year ago. And we talked about that using Gatsby, right? Gatsby as the framework and then uh, it pulls content from the Notion pages that you have where you've written your blogs. And again, that's where you normally generate your content anyways. So it makes it really easy for you to get information from there into your static site. But of course, uh, with as time passes, uh, as time goes on, new technologies come up and we've recently stumbled upon a really cool piece of technology that we think is going to be the next future for a lot of uh, website building. And we're actually going to migrate a lot of our projects onto this platform as well. So I thought it'd be nice to kind of showcase my meandering into this uh, new framework, this, this technology called Nuxt 3 and kind of show you how I go about tackling any new technology and most importantly, figuring out how to, um, you know, integrate it together with the Notion API. So we have a really, really powerful blog and I'll talk about those powerful blog features right now as well. So if you're ready, let's get straight into it. All right. So jumping into it here, um, why, I like to start off with every build of a why, what, and how, right? So that we're really clear on why exactly, you know, this has to be. Why, why are we building this in the first place? What's the intention behind our design? So the why is very clear for me, right? Why is because we want to make sure that we can create a personal website uh, that is latest technology, meaning that it has speed, um, functionality, um, etc. While still writing in Notion, um, and also over time share with you how you might pull something from Obsidian and other places as well. But I really do believe that this technology is going to be the future, at least um, Nux3 as one. And we'll talk about that in the how section, uh, writing in Notion. Uh, and in the future, other um, productivity tools as well. Another thing is um, the um, original Gatsby to Notion integration was based on the unofficial API, which has now been phased out. So let's build this integration with the official API now that it's out of beta, right? So I think that's very important. And then what we're going to do here today, uh, I think at the end of the stream, what I'd like to have is um, a fully working site that can pull from my Notion pages to give me um, my blog articles uh, as I want to see them. So having everything from images to links working to callouts working, let's see how we can, how far we can get through one day, right? So let's do that. So. Let's go ahead and say we want a uh, functional website on a custom domain, um, ideally, right? Our functional website um, and then deployed on custom domain. Let's see if we can get that done today. And then we also want um, a functional websites on Nux3 first and then um, pulling uh, website pulling 
log content from our um, from our Notion database. Okay. So let's get started like that. If you guys have any questions, do feel free to post in the chat. Again, I'm very, very excited about this topic. I'm learning this together just with you guys as well. So I think we'll have a lot of fun. And if you want to follow along, just feel, feel free to follow along, whether you're here live or watching the recording. Uh, very excited to do this together with you. So let me go ahead and change my uh, view for a second. So I make sure that I have everything up and ready for you uh, to make sure that everyone can see what I'm talking about. Give me one quick second. I want to make sure that it's all good. There we go. Drag this over here and let's get started. Perfect, perfect. So coming into here, uh, what I want to do is introduce uh, Next.js first. Uh, so Next, Next 3 JS many, many different frameworks out there. So Nux3 basically uh, has a lot of really cool features where you don't have to handle imports anymore. And this is more for the technical savvy guys. Uh, and I assume if you're watching this, you're technically savvy in nature as well. But basically all imports don't matter anymore. And all the variables that you use inside your, um, inside your project can be accessible by any component. So the beauty of that and anybody who's been using any kind of uh, you know, maybe Next.js or any you know, of those frameworks will know that when you start componentizing your, um, your your code, you have to keep passing variables down the chain. So the difference for Next 3 is that anytime you have any component, any, um, any variable within your application is for you to access. And I think that's amazing, right? Uh, that's That saves a lot of um, headache when you're trying to make sure that every single component has information that it needs to display the information that you want to show, or at least do the action it wants to do. Also, there's a lot of really cool features that you can do where you don't really have to rely on a server anymore. You can deploy a lot of serverless functions um, and it essentially makes it so that uh, using one kind of uh, project, you can deploy both the server, which runs things, uh, whether or not the front end is up, whether or not someone is loading the website um, and making sure that things are happening in the back. So there's a lot of cool features like that. We won't go into all of them, but the main thing is that the development community is really, really into this. And of course, I'm kind of a pseudo developer at this point, <laughs> but I want to give you guys a perspective of like someone with, you know, traditionally low code or no code experience going into coding and my approach and how I would try to just make things as easy as I can when I get started. The thing that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be borrowing on a very um, great uh, piece of work from one of the community developers. Um, and he's made something called view three notion. And this basically gives the ability for you to use notion as your CMS. Again, that's what we're doing today. But what they do is that they are able to get you know, very, very accurate results and anything um, custom you want to add to it. For example, if you want every single header to look a certain way, if you want every single image to have a certain pop up when you click on it, anything you want to do, you can just add on yourself and they've made the framework very, very clear and easy. So I haven't used this for myself yet, but today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be trying to install this um, plugin together with a brand new project, they have some example projects uh, to get started. And we're going to see the whole process of how we go ahead and dive into a new technology, figure out the plugin. And I'm sure there'll be many bugs that come up along the way because we're never, you know, you can never expect the unexpected, but hopefully this gives you a really good view of, you know, the mentality you might want to go into when you are trying to learn something new and want to try to build something new. And hopefully I can tell you from my experience, what you can ignore and what you can keep and all those kind of things. Awesome. So they have some examples for Nux.js and you know they have a demo um, a demo repository here. So basically the first thing we want to do is we want to just grab this demo repository and see if we can um, start this project from scratch. So when we take a look at getting started here, right? Basically it says you can download the uh, recommended setup. So let's go and do that. So first we want to get the Node.js latest LTS version. So let's go ahead and download the latest. So the latest version is 16.15. I'm going to go ahead and download the installer there. Let's go ahead and install that and then open that up. And then let's go ahead and do the installation. And while I'm going through, I will also send this out into the, 
let's go ahead and do chocolate tea as well. Perfect. So while that's installing, I'll also paste the link inside the chat if you guys want to try it out. That's Node.js. Um, and we can go ahead and wait for this to load. While that's going on, uh, we're going to see uh, we need a Volar extension. Uh, so we're probably going to download that. And for Visual Studio Code, I think I have the latest version, but let's go ahead and check that out. Visual Studio Code. Um, boy, this is my what I was experimenting with. Let's go ahead and open a new window. And let's go ahead and close this. I do know that it has an update that's being for me, so I might as well do the update as well if there is. So normally it will pop up in the bottom left, but if it doesn't pop up, let's just see if there is an updates button. If there isn't, that's fine too, then don't bother me for updates later. <laughs> uh, here, check for updates. There we go. Install update. So we'll install update there. Let's see if this is finished first. Finish. Nice. Uh huh. Okay. So before I... I want to close all open applications first. So let's know for this first so that we don't update. And then we go ahead and press enter so we can update here. And then let's make sure it installs everything it should. And then we'll probably do a Choco update chocolate tea later as well, so that we have uh, chocolate tea being updated. But I think we're okay for now, so if we just let it run. Amazing stuff. Uh, so while that's running, uh, we're going to see what this Volar extension is. So we're going to install this as well. So let's go ahead and... Uh -huh. So let's go ahead and install this. Oh, this is in the um, visual code. So we just need to, a uh, visual studio code. So we'll just go there later and make sure that that works. But for now, I think we're just gonna wait for this uh, while we go ahead and make sure that we have all the things we need. Okay, so it'll be yarn install. Um, and then yarn dev will be the prompt to start. That's good. And what I really want to know is that for this demo, how do I install this demo specifically into our package? So I believe what we can do is, I don't want to fork it out. I just want to pull this code. So any developers in the chat, if you guys want to help out, that's also awesome as well, in terms of how do you pull a specific directory. But I do remember that I read somewhere how to do this. So let me just go and see, find that as well. Oh, and also I, I want to show you guys the example at the end of the day, like what will come out. Um, so their example would look like this. Um, so this will be the example and it will essentially uh, host all of this here. You can check out like how everything works. So this is full width pages. Um, this is going to be complex layouts. Let's see what happens here. So yeah, everything looks like it should work. So I'm actually very excited about this and see uh, exactly how we can do it. Okay. Um, Python is working. Enter to exit. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead now and open Visual Studio Code again. And let's see what we can do here. Um, again, I want to check for updates so I can install this update from that. Okay, I think that's working ideally. Okay, update now. And now that we have the latest Visual Studio Code, of course, if you don't have Visual Studio Code, you have to um, install that yourself. Um, but ideally, I think this worked. Sometimes there is this like really weird bug where you have to um, open it as administrator. I do hope that I didn't run into it now. Um, let's try this. Oh, there we go. Very cool. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and add some extensions. There's an extension that um, they're requesting for us. So let's go ahead and go over to here. 
and they're saying that they want a volar extension so let's go ahead and find volar so view language features volar um and then we can go ahead and search that in the extensions library i believe it's one by johnson yeah that looks about right i'm going to install this now that i have that i should be good so those are prerequisites Okay, so now all I have to do is just grab this fold, uh, the folder for the demo, and then ideally I should be able to uh, get started. So first thing I want to do is I want to clone a repository, um, and I want to clone a repository like in a specific folder. So let's go ahead first and go cd repo. So I'm in oops, uh, cd repos. There we go. So I'm in the repos folder and. Basically, what that means is if I show you guys on my, <clears throat> if I show you guys here, basically, whenever you are in a terminal, usually starts in your home folder like this. If you want things saved inside your repos folder or whatever folder you create, you have to do CD repos, and then it goes into your repos folder, and then that's where you can start building things inside. So I'm in my repos folder and now I can clone from GitHub and I want to specifically make sure I can clone properly, so, uh, only that folder. So let's search up how to clone a specific folder from GitHub. Okay, and then we're going to, I know there's a recent one, a sparse checkout. Uh, no, that's filter. That's not what I want. There you go. Download directory. Uh, these are their different tools. I don't need that. SVN export. That's not what I want either. Um, I think maybe the best thing for us to do right now is just to grab it from here. I do wonder if I can just download this whole code. I can. So let's go ahead and do that then. Let's go to demo. Let's go to next. Uh, okay, I still need to download the whole thing. Okay, that's fine. So let's download the entire zip. And then we're going to download this entire zip file. Of course, we don't need everything, right? So we only want the demo folder for Nux.js. Um, so I'm going to take this information and then I'm just going to call this one something different. So let's go ahead and start a new repo here. I'm going to do a new folder and we're going to call this next three notion. And then let's go ahead. Um, we're going to put all this stuff inside this folder and let's make sure that works. Perfect. And now what I can do is I can open up that folder. So I'm gonna open the folder. I'm going to go into repos again, uh, next three notion. Let's see if that is what I want. So I have this folder now. And then usually when I go into any of the um, applications, when you want to first get started, we want to go through and see what they want. So usually it's a yarn install. Um, Let's make sure the dependencies are there. So yarn install, let's see what happens. This is super exciting guys. I'm really, really fascinated by whenever I come up with a new tool because, uh, or come across a new tool per se, because it means that I can learn something new and uh, really gives me a lot of um, like freedom to explore my creativity and see how I can pick up what other people have dropped off and take it on forward as well. I think that's really fun. Let's see yarn dev. Oh, looks like it might just work immediately. That's super exciting. Okay. So let's go ahead and open a folder here. You can see it's very beautiful. Nux three. Um, let's do uh, no for now, just because we're still testing stuff. Nice. So it's starting. Amazing. So we've already been able to lo load this. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to make sure we're changing this to be our stuff instead of uh, the examples, right? 
So let's go ahead and see where is this currently loading from. Um, and I guess what we can do here is look back onto the documentation and understand that a little bit, right? And again, you can see it's very, very easy. Like whenever you look at code, you might think it's like super complicated and yeah, you know, it scares you a little bit, but you don't have to be scared. I want to let you know. Okay. So notion get page blocks is where it's coming from apparently. So this is inside notion renderer. So let's go ahead and find notion renderer. Shall we? Notion renderer. That's inside index okay so this is the web page it's coming from so let's go ahead and find out where that page is so notion.so slash that let's see this should just be a public page amazing so my understanding is that if i just load my blog site instead i should be able to pull everything up and that sounds really interesting. So let's go ahead and do that, right? Um, so let me first find out where my blog site is. Um, give me one quick second for that. It's my sharing space, but I need to just double check uh, where to find that. So let's go ahead and go here. And uh, so on that sharing space notion. Um, Red sharing space. Just going to find it inside my notion. Give me one quick second for that. There we go. Got it. So now I have my URL, which is here. And again, this is a very uh, public site anyways. So then if I paste it here, please don't tell me that's all it takes. That's super easy. If that's it. That's, that's true. So I'm going to just refresh now. I think I do need to take down the, um, server and go ahead and start again yes i realize that's probably the case let's let's do a refresh and see no that's it wow no way that's crazy that that's how it works no way um i do see that tables seem to have issues um so that's not a problem i understand that completely and that's fine um but what we can do here is if let's say i just take this uh Okay, let me just go ahead and edit this as well. So let's go in into my editor and make sure that I can edit that. So let's go into here. I'm gonna go into my editor for Notion. Again, that's why I think it's really nice and it's really easy. So let's say that I copied this link and instead I just linked the page here. So I just made it into a link like that. I'm just very curious how that would work. So if I go into my um here and then if i refresh what, what's going to happen here i'm very curious so right now we're exploring the limitations of this tool is that right now we have this article um that should be loaded here let me also just make this into a uh let's duplicate it in a way where it becomes a new page so let's duplicate this completely and I'm just going to paste it here. So it's a proper page by itself. And then I want to understand more about how this works. So I'm going to reload this. I actually, I actually think the database would work. It's just that we haven't loaded it. Anyway, it doesn't look like it works if it's not in a database. So if I open it up, it basically shows me a page like this. So it doesn't give me a nice slug. I think that's, that's something that we can change a slug being that I want something nice that I can uh, refer to very commonly. Uh, so looks like images work. Everything works really well, guys. That's amazing. So just like that, we already have a working website that's based on our notion page. And of course we can add more pages to this and wrap everything around so that if we see that there's additional pages inside, uh, inside here, we can just basically run through a loop and then make them into individual components as well. So I think that's going to be really, really exciting. And we're going to see how that one plays out. So let's go ahead and browse their documentation a little bit more because I want to really understand what works and what doesn't work. So simple tables work. Yes. Um, and obviously databases is planned that's good as well. 
I want to uh, go ahead and see. Yeah, those are composables, that's fine. So basically this whole page is just rendering that. So let's say I wanted to add something of my own to the top of the page. I believe this is where I can do it. So if I go into the top of the page, this Notion Renderer, right? So if I go here and I say like I have an H1, hello world, that should do something in my understanding. Yes, so you can wrap this site with anything that you want and it becomes a normal site. So if you want to put like a navigation bar, if you want to do anything like that, basically it's very, very simple. Uh, but I think that what this does is like, wow, like I, I'm so impressed by the, like the ease of use that uh, we're able to have right now. I'm really, really impressed guys. And I, and I can't overstate that. Uh, one thing for you guys to know, basically, I'm going to be trying to rebuild all of this functionality into the uh, Nux Free Notion. So I'm going to be adding to what people have been building uh, open source. But the idea is that, you know, in the previous articles, what we were able to do is simply go ahead and have, you know, blog, post, you know, wherever it might be. So I don't want to lose any of those links that we already have. I want to make sure the links are uh, handled properly. Uh, so that's something that I'm definitely going to be looking at. Um, but for sure, this serves as a very good start to this blog. And I think what we have to try to also figure out is this um, rendering function as well. But I think this is really, really cool, guys. And I think one more thing we're going to try first, too, is how do you communicate back to the Notion API? Because I've seen some really cool tutorials that show you like, OK, so if I had, let's say, a table in here, right? And I wanted to check something off or do something interactive with it. How does it update Notion itself? How do I make it so that people in the front end can do comments, for example, and then add to that uh, Notion page? So I think there's just a lot to you can do with this. Um, let's explore a bit more and see what we can do next in our step-by-step -step checklist. I do want to see how I can publish this onto a custom domain as well. So I think that'd be very cool. I think the answer will be that I will need to work on this more to figure out how to pull in each individual blog, right, from the table that we have. How do we pull in each individual blog and iterate and make a new page on that? And then after that, actually, as a proper blog page. Uh, but first, I think for the purposes of this demonstration, um, I will go ahead and just make sure that we have duplicates of each of these blogs, for example, right? And then what we can do is, oops, let's go to the editable version. So let's go ahead and go to the editable version, um, which is right, right here. Um, go back one stage. And then what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to duplicate all of these um, so that actually I'm going to duplicate this whole thing. Let's duplicate this whole database. And then with this duplicated database, I can now go ahead and put it up into this section. So this might take a while because I actually have a lot of uh, newsletters that's in here. And maybe I should have realized that and not done this, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, let's go ahead and refresh this as well. Oh, it's all good. So once I have this now, I can go ahead and just pop this up here. And then because I have that, I don't need to do the newsletters right now. Um, and if I just refresh this, it should be immediately there. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. Fantastic. So it looks like it works really well. I can just click anything open and then I can immediately see the information here, like just like this. So that's really nice. And again, we'll make this into a proper, um, a proper uh, template as well. Um, looks really nice. Again, it's almost one to one to what we have on Notion. So everything's loading really good here. I really like it. Perfect. So let's go ahead and now publish this live. So let's see how we can publish a, um, a page from Nux.js. So Nux.js publish um, to Let's just see what, what, where do we deploy it to? It might be Vercel. Vercel might be the best place to do it. Uh, let's just see. Yeah. Okay. 
So I think I'll do Vercel because I'm familiar with it right now. I also like Netlify, but I think Vercel is really cool. Um, so what we can do is we can do a static site. We, we will have to do some SSR in the future though. So I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, for now, let's just go ahead and see what goes on. So we have to first put this into our, um, so let's also delete this for a second. Um, let's just make sure everything still works after I delete that. Okay, perfect. We'll save that. And then now we have this. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that we can deploy this. Let's first go to Vercel and then log in. So Vercel. So I'm just going to log in. It's going to ask me for my GitHub credentials. So I'm just going to do that. Um, and I'm going to do that on another tab so I don't have to disturb you guys. And then let's go ahead and go to GitHub. And then we're going to plug this information in. I'm going to go here. And then we're going to paste the password in as well. Perfect. And then now we have this. This was the family connection or the make work fun app. We're going to make a new project. The new projects, we're going to have to find the um, repository. So what's really important here is that we have to actually go ahead and grab uh, or make push this repository back into our GitHub repository. OK, this is what I want to do. That's three notion dot git. I think that's it. Then we're able to do it here. And now if I refresh this, everything's in. Amazing. Okay, perfect. So now that we have this information inside this private repository, what we can do is we can refresh this and import the new Nuxt uh, repository. So I'm going to add a GitHub account. I want to grab it from here, only select repositories. I want to only load it from my recent one, which is the um, next next three notion, perfect install. So Connor Lynn, we have the next three notion. Um, it's next three, that's fine. Next three notion, and then we're just going to deploy and let's see what happens. So. I guess what we're creating here today is just a really easy way to have a uh, very nicely, you know, create a notion page and turn that immediately into code and you can do any kind of wrappers you want around it, meaning that you can add your own navigation bars, you can add your own, you know, custom interactions that happen on, you know, certain pages. But what we're going to be exploring more in the future is how do we turn each individual item inside a table into its own respective blog page? I think that's going to be the really cool development, and I'm super excited to get started on that. You can see that during the stream, we looked into it a little bit, uh, but of course, I think more development needs to happen, and that's something that I'm very happy and excited to do together with the community. So. Let's see what's going on. Um, it looks like it's loaded, right? So we go to a dashboard and let's see which web website is on right now. So it's on here, it's on Vercel right now. So if anybody goes to next 3 uh, notionvercel app, you can see that everything works as intended. That's amazing, that's super quick. Um, I'm so excited by that because it means that a lot more capabilities are gonna be unlocked in the future as we get more and more um, settled in creating pages just from Notion and creating custom domains on that and just creating whole frameworks and wrapping around that. So yeah, super excited. Thank you guys so much uh, for watching. We'll put up a uh, 
proper article to show everyone how that will work in the future as well. Uh, but for now, uh, super excited to have you guys here on board and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Please take care.